Hey guys, I'm back from my break. Um, I had a break, a two week break for a surgery and um, I am healed and ready to go. It took me a while to bounce back. Uh, this is week three, right? Uh, yeah. So it's like week three and I still haven't really bounced back from uh, the surgery's effects. And uh, I hope that, you know, by week four, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I do have, I still have a fatigue, and this week, me starting this week was still iffy for me. I still didn't feel like I, um, happy birthday, <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I still don't feel like I'm, you know, right back at it. I still have this terrible, terrible fatigue uh, that hits me out of nowhere, like I'm doing something random, and then just suddenly I'm just so tired. Um, and I just floored. The one day, or like probably three days in a row at one point, I was in bed all day. It was just, just surgery is really, really bad. And considering that I have pre-existing uh, conditions, it's probably going to take me a while to really get back into it. So I'm so sorry if I have to cancel a session or, um, or, or like have to reschedule a session with you guys or something like that. Cancel a stream, not, <laughs> not session. This isn't private tutoring. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm back. Hopefully today I can, you know, my thoughts are nice and rounded off and I can give you guys a decent critique hour. Um, one big weird thing that I had that happened, which I wanted to talk about is I, I felt like I forgot how to critique. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've forgotten how to do it. Um, I hope, I hope I didn't forget how to do it. And, uh, you know, I hope I can, you know, give you a decent class today, but it's weird. Like I felt like I forgot how to do it. It's dumb. I mean, I went on vacation before in April and I, and I was just fine, but I don't know. Anyway. So let's get started today. Um, I wanted to, I found a, like a re really common theme in the issues some of you face. So I'm just going to move this over here and get started. That was the chat. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I'll try my best to uh, recover as soon as possible for you guys. Uh, but yeah, a common theme in the community that I see, us just scrolling through it, and I'm sure you guys have picked this up too, is you all have some real, real problems with skin tones. Considering that this whole channel started with a skin tone tutorial that I made, um, and how to paint skin, uh, which is probably the most popular video I have. It's so old, it's back when I was a noob, but, um, I don't know, it's like I was noobish. Uh, I, uh, you know, considering that that's my mo most popular channel, my most, most popular video on my channel, um, that you guys still have so much issues with it, so many issues with it. I feel like I've, you know, really discussed it a lot, but now that I think about it, I haven't really discussed skin tones all that much. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that for you guys today. Um, let me just close Discord because I think it messes up my OBS. And uh, I don't know why you're on. Uh, um, I don't know. All right. OBS is telling me some weird stuff. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. For this piece, I think that you have a number of issues. The first and most important issue is before perfecting your tones, your grayscale tones, you jumped into color. Uh, and the reason like, you oversaturated your colors, you overexposed them, they're really, really, really overexposed, oversaturated. Uh, your use of white is completely wrong. If the secondary bounce light was this bright, it would cast its own shadows this way. So what you did was you cast a secondary light source this way to counter the primary shadows, uh, primary light source's shadow. And what's happened is you've preserved the cast shadow of the primary light source, but you've brought in the secondary bounce light here. This is entirely wrong. When you have two light sources that counter each other, they don't allow each other to cast shadows. They're forever at war. So what happens is <clears throat> this being this damn bright. It's white. It's pure white. I mean, look where it is on the map. It's just full on white. Um, and what you have here is because this is so strong, it wouldn't be a bounce light anymore. It wouldn't be ambient uh, bounce light anymore. It would cast another shadow in this direction. Uh, so what you did here is just completely wrong. It's thrown off your saturation. It's thrown off your whole shadow scheme. It's thrown off your form. The nose looks twisted into the side like something out of Paranorman, which is a style, but I don't think you were going for that at all. Um, sorry, I have to adjust my cast. I'm going to be wearing this thing for another month. <coughs> um, so 
considering all of that, considering I can't really paint this away, I'm just going to try my best to correct the skin tones to where they need to be. And the biggest, most important thing, which I want you to write back to me, is skin tones are painted, the best skin tones are painted with subtlety. Write that back to me. Um, so what that means is when you are painting skin tones, the less color you have, the more gray you have, the better. I'm not saying bring in gray scales. Gray is gray. It's going to look ugly compared to uh, saturation. And if you have grays on the face, it's going to show. Like if you have just one area that is completely gray, it's you can you can tell. Um, that's that's not what we want. It's going to look like she has a beard. All right. So we don't want that. What we want is desaturation. And when I say gray, I really mean like a, a, a very desaturated pale value. Even if your skin tone is from like Sri Lanka, even if you're that dark. Um, if you like in the natural, like the average skin tone in like South India or wherever, wherever that is, is really, really dark. But if you were to separate that skin tone, just the skin layer, it's going to be really gross. Just separate that skin layer from the, the blood underneath it and the sweat on, on top of it and the oil on top of it and any saturation. You were to just bring it into a vacuum. The color of that would be pretty pale. So all of that excess saturation and brightness and orangeness that's brought out, even in the palest skin tones or the most olive skin tones, the skin itself by itself is really, really very pale plain a color it's a very plain color so subtlety is key you guys are overdoing it no it's saturation is not key usually people who make the mistake of oversaturated skin tones are following people who have this bad uh, habit it's not a style um, you're not in a position to choose a style also the light environment is really really problematic you have two massive light sources kept just battling each other you know for the uh, domination of the world and then you have just a dark background why why did you make it this dark if you if you if in your mind you had two light sources just battling it out you need to raise this all the way up because that's what that light would do the light isn't just specific to this character's bust it's it's gonna affect everything in the room around the character you need to start considering even being specific and picky with the value of the background for your study because it keeps in mind that one day you're going to have to paint stuff that's in a room. All right, once we've corrected those two and prepared ourselves for the corrections needed for the face, we can jump in and desaturate. All right, just, just this simple desaturation has done so much for this portrait. Um, look at where it was before. This was orange. And uh, orange is not a very popular color nowadays for many reasons, guys. Um, I, I really recommend you stay away from orange uh, for, for, <laughs> for many reasons, okay? So it's going to look like a fake tan. You're going to look like an orangutan. Orangutan? Orangutan? You're going to look like you're painting something that, is had, that has orange painted on it. It's not going to look like a naturally occurring skin tone. It's going to look like an external pigment. External pigment means makeup or tattoos or freckles or something like that. Even freckles have a natural, uh, you know, order to their to the to the colors they come in. So now that we've corrected that, we have to decide where this person is from. Uh, so if they are from the north, let's just you know think about it in a very simple way. I'm not going to say any specific countries. Um, uh, the more north you go, the paler you get. Um, let's just think about it. Think about it that like Russia. Okay, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Russian people are pale as fuck. Um, my Russian friend was so so pale and so beautiful too. Uh, but all of her blush, every time there was a bit of cold breeze in her face or something, she would turn purple. And that's because you don't have that much orange or that much tanness or that much darkness in your just the just the base skin tone layer. And so all of that blood shines through because it's translucent. It's not see-through. Uh, it's, it's not uh, opaque and it's not fully see-through. It's just translucent. So it's showing some of the blood underneath and mixing in through the skin tone. And then what we get is a purple because the skin, the blood is very, very bluish under the skin tone and a lot of other you know, veins and whatnot are causing that purple. So we have to decide where this person's from. Right here, where you are right now, this person, the, just the base value, if we were to just desaturate, this person is very dark, very tan, probably from you know Arab countries or probably from 
uh, just Middle Eastern, tan, olive, South American, something like that where the sun is constantly shining. Or there's just like a um, like a hereditary uh, tanness to the, I don't know, to the group of people, okay? So that's where this person is from. If they were from anywhere north, they would be getting all those purple tones you used in the skin tone. These look like external makeup. So what the critique is, these are too purple. They need to be more orange because if you are pale, you get purple blush. If you are olive, you get orange blush. Write that back to me. Orange or reddish blush. The more pale you get, the blush tones, which are the reddish tones in all high traffic areas like the nose and the mouth and the cheek, all of these are the entirety of the head, which is an extremity. So all the blood gets trafficked here before it finally goes back down like a big uh, roundabout. <clears throat> all that blood here for a pale person would turn the skin tone a little bit more purple. And for a person who's already dark, that purple gets canceled out by all that yellowness in their skin tone, all that orangeness. And we get more of a warm, bloody red uh, blush tone. Okay. That's it. That's a simple rule. Just as long as you follow that. If you bring in pale pink, full-on cool pink and cool uh, hair pink, like a hair color. Also, all ha hair color is decided by skin tone. Write that back to me. Um, uh, so hair color, skin blush, if you bring in unusually cool values for a warm skin tone, it's not going to look natural. It's going to look fake. That's even even to the point where salon people or, or, or stylists recommend, they, they, they decide which skin tone you are. Are you cool or are you warm skin toned? And then they just tell you the, the range of colors you're allowed to use on your skin for it to look natural. You want it to look natural. You don't want your skin to look uh, funny compared to your hair or to your makeup. So when you're choosing makeup as well, if you're choosing makeup, um, you don't choose a pale pink color and a pale uh, lipstick color that does not match your skin tone. You match your skin tone, always basing it off of that. So if this person was from the from like a little bit more north, their values would stop right along here. We go up just a little bit in saturation, but that's not the case. We stay right here where they are. They're pretty dark, right? All right. So I'm just going to raise this up just a little bit so we don't have any more of that. And this pinkness that you have, I'm going to completely get rid of it. I can't correct this whole face, but through by correcting it, I can probably reveal to you some of the bigger issues that uh, as a whole affect you guys as a community. All right, I really like the lipstick color you chose or the lip color you chose because it's a little bit more warm, uh, but it's still leaning on cool. And all that means is that you're too low on the red. You got to go a little bit closer to orange. So I'm just cooling that down just a little bit. I'm going to cool this, I mean warm this up, sorry. Um, the problem is you chose purple eyes for a tan skin. We are going to have an issue trying to fit those purple eyes back towards. Even choosing contacts and choosing eye color is decided by the base skin tone that range that you choose. So for designing characters, don't put like pale, cool pink on a really, really dark skin tone unless you know for sure those colors are from similar light environments and similar, similar biology. And I'm going to desaturate one more time this is a very very extensive saturation and then I'm going to reintroduce all the blushes um, if you wanted to go that high all right let me see if I can correct that bounce light really really quickly it's very very uh, uh, like a very very uh, big mistake you made here with the light source with the secondary light source you, you don't do that light doesn't just sit like a bunch of a bunch of mush sitting on top of the face. It affects everything around it. This whole cast shadow would have disappeared and the secondary light source would have remained. And then we have this whole area way, way too exposed. We only have just a little bit left behind. And I have a feeling you, 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 uh, uh, like imitate or attempt to imitate artists that are like, uh, I don't want to name any specific artists. You guys already know how I feel about them. But popular artists on, uh, like, Places like DeviantArt who only specialize in anime, anime fan art or like porny stuff. They're drawing commercial stuff. Commercial means that they are going to break a lot of rules with lighting and they're going to be overdoing it all. All the light show. Imagine just like a burlesque show. That's what they do with their... There's no subtlety. 
And that's why you jump so far into the into these values because there was no subtlety in the original artist that inspired you. Um, so you're not going to be you're not going to develop an instinct for subtlety. Find artists and professionals to admire that have subtlety in their work. Also, since this is a bounce light that is secondary, it means that it's not a second sun. There's not going to be a second sun. Um, that means that it's not going to be a warm bounce light. It's going to be something even blue. It can be a blue secondary light bounce light, or it can be a, uh, you know, she's standing beside a blue car. The bounce light off that car is going to be blue. It can be any other color, but it can't be warm because just you just don't want to tackle two warm light sources with each other. Either have the warm universal coming off the sun, revealing all the warmth in her skin tone, and then you have everything else. Still, still, even then, I just want to completely paint it off and just uh, get it out of here. But alas, I have no time. Good job on the nose, but considering that the light is coming from top down, this is value sharing all over here. Okay, the nose uh, values are all wrong, uh, not all wrong, the edge work, sorry, is all off. It needs to be corrected. The chin has no response to the primary light source. You need that. The chin is an altitude of its own. The eye is very pretty, but all you got to do is flip it and you find a ton of mistakes. The orbit of the lip is way too high, close to the nose. There's almost no space for a cupid's bow. Um, the eyes, this eye is painted as a front view eye. It has zero rotation because we see this inner corner. When we see an eye in three quarter view, this inner corner gets hidden behind the swell of the eyeball. Whereas here you're showing it to me full frontal. Um, and what you need to do is just tuck that away and develop your rotation. So as a whole, um, you are at a point where you shouldn't even be worried about skin tones. At a whole, you should be completely just leaving for the probably, and I'm sorry to say this, for the, about the next six months to eight months, leave color out of this uh, and just grayscale your work so you can work on all of this science that's involved in painting a face successfully. What I'm going to do now is desaturate any light on the face. I'm doing this because there is, even though it's a warm light source, generally the sun is on the warm side of the spectrum. It's still very, very white um, and it's white warm. So that means that there is a great deal of white wherever there is any dew. So the white of the sun is reflected very, very well on the surface of water. Um, so when we have water or oils on the face, uh, they act like a mirror. Um, so it's not just skin. The, the light has to get through the water and then get to the skin and then bring out the yellow. But first, it has just like a layer where the water is thickest and the ray of sun is just right that we have this whiteness come through. All right, so I threw that whiteness in there, and now I'm going to bring back that blush, but I'm going to start off. Just look at how I do the blush. I'm starting off with the mid-tone. Wherever that is, I locate it. It's not this, and it's not this. It's just something over here. That's where we place mid-tones. And blush colors, blush values for a face that has blood in it that you want to make feel alive is always set in the mid-tones. That's where saturation happens. Blush saturation happens on the mid-tone belt between highlights and shadows. Write that back to me. And what I do here is I just push this down. Actually, no, no, I'm going to leave it where it is. And I'm just going to, as a, in a curve, just move this down towards some saturation. And I'm just trying to find a good color here. I'm not going to use the entirety of this color. I'm working with a very, very low opacity brush. And I'm just throwing that redness, that purpleness, that yellowness. I'm just trying to balance it all together. The purpleness coming out of the eyes, I don't want to allow it to get too warm. I'm trying to match these two. And right here, between any skin tone, between any shadow and highlight, the mid-tone is sitting there. <clears throat> Right here, between any highlight and shadow, that's where I bring in that mid-tone. And even now, as I bring in the saturation, the skin tone is way too saturated. And you'll see where it was before. The forehead is almost completely dark. I'm going to have to stretch that light to sit over the forehead a little more. But really, all your rotation, um, your just the form, the anatomy, Blending is a little bit too much. Uh, all of this can be addressed by just grayscaling your work. All of these mistakes you're making over here with the uh, 
with the bounce light. It's very, very excessive. The lips get to be a little, a little bit more red, and you can push down into the cool. So this is cooling down a red. This is how you cool down a blush tone. When you want to cool a red, you just push it down towards purples, and then continue down into fuchsia. I hate that word. So I'm just grabbing some red that isn't that cool. It's still very cherry red. And I'm, again, not the entirety of the color. I'm just using some of it on the lips on color mode. All right, and I'm just going to go back to where, again, I find some extremities. And I'm just in between the highlights. I'm bringing in that redness for the blush. A little bit on the nose, just on the tip of the nose. And we're kind of balancing out this uh, I guess uh, ethnicity or whatever, wherever the, this person's from. One last thing I'm going to do is find the general base value. So I'm going to adjust the base value. I'm going to move into the yellows. Actually, I'm going to move down into the rose, like this rose buddy color right here. And I'm just going to rush that over everything. And the reason why is I want to desaturate one last time. Subtlety is key. That's how you get that nice, dewy skin tone, just with subtlety. All right, so you have some edge work problems that could all be corrected uh, with some grayscale studies. Let's take a look at how this looked like before. It's going to be quite a change, but when you want successful skin tone values in your paintings, subtlety is the only way to do it. And it just shows that there was zero subtlety. There was zero subtlety in your in your learning process. Let me change the background value to where you had it before so I, so I can show you the large change. It's a very, very big change here. Oh, whoopsie. Oops. And this probably looked okay to you, and that's what worries me. This should never look okay to you. So we darkened the value before. It was orange. You painted an orange creature. This is not human, because human has way too much subtlety on it. And when it comes to external pigmentation, let's say the person was deciding to go a little avant-garde and use cool value makeup and prop work on a warm skin tone. You can do whatever you want. As long as the skin tone is okay, you can go all the way up here in pigmentation areas, areas that are allowed to glow by rules of fantasy or rules of makeup or aesthetics. Uh, you're allowed to do this. But just don't touch the skin. Leave the skin out of it. You can do this. You can make the lips a little bit more like neon or that holographic lip nowadays that they do. Just don't touch the skin. You can go crazy. You can use a cool, which is really gross, by the way. I, I wouldn't do it. You can use a cool eye color and a warm lip color in the same face if you feel like doing that and you just feel like breaking the rules of makeup and all of that stuff, which is cool. It's trending as well. Just don't touch the skin. The skin is not part of it. Unless you're one of those, you know, those really weird people. Do you know those, like, weird group of people that make themselves orange and sit on the streets of Japan and, like, I forget what they're called. Tomogachi girls? I don't know what they're called. Um, they scared me when I was little. I used to be really scared of those people. I don't know why. They were just orange. They look like aliens. Okay. Subtlety is key. Trump is not human. Write that back to me. Uh, okay, I'm taking questions now, so feel free to ask your questions. But I want to show you that the background was wrong. The background value was wrong. It needs to be bright. This is necessary. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use this one because there was a little bit of leakage. So this is the right value to use. And the bounce light you did was just all kinds of wrong. Um, I need to. Uh, so yeah, ask questions and I'll answer them right now about skin tone. Please don't ask me about my brushes or something like that. Watch you guys ask me about my brushes now. So I need to just darken this. Hide those marching ants. Do you see how important it is? Look how pretty that is now that we've focused the light source to point only to the primary. 
focused all of the skin tone. I haven't even touched the rotation issue in the lips and the eyes. Just look at that. Isn't that pretty? Subtlety is a lesson that you learn and when you mature as you study. Subtlety is a very, very big part of your journey. Learning how to just chill the fuck out with your saturation and your values and your contrast and your exposure. You're just like, you know, a noob. You know, a noob. I don't know, like a what's the what's a similar craft like a noob fencer right you just learn fencing and you're a total noob at it you're just doing all kinds of shit you know you're just hacking and slashing you don't care and then a professional comes by and says dude relax you need to think about what the opponent's going to do you need to think about you know subtle changes you can't just reveal what you're going to do next in your next motion uh, you have to be a little bit more calculated you have to prepare for different kinds of outcomes you can't just go hacking at a tree with an axe that's not what fencing is exactly the same there's a lot of subtlety in art and you guys are just hacking at that tree um and uh, you have to remember there is a big factor in subtlety i kind of blame myself i didn't do enough of this uh lesson to this type of lesson um and uh, i just really wanted to focus on that today for you uh, i'll look at the questions in a second i'm just gonna do some more just don't be a lumberjack all right don't be a lumberjack 2017 <laughs> right so this whole area this cast shadow right here is building up radially to point to the light source this eye is nice and rotated the far corner isn't showing but this one you've completely shifted it toward me and the viewers very very wrong this whole part of the face is just rotated away from the light source so it gets to radially descend into some values that are a little bit darker than before after subtlety is key and surely the person you copied which I know who it is um, uh, has the same face copy and paste every time have the same exact skin tone they use between characters barely any changes in fact I, I don't imagine that they know how to paint darker skin or paler skin um, paler skin is, is, is a little bit easier than darker skin uh, darker skin, the more dark you get, the each drop in a value brings in a new either warm or cool value in the blush tones underneath. So you get purples in darker skin, really, really dark skin. This is very, very easy compared to painting dark skin, which is why we start with mid-tones, olives. They're more of a universal tan, like Russell Peters says, we're all going to be beige one day because <laughs> a brown person will eventually help you. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, okay, so let's see, um, how to start painting with the right colors. I always find it hard, so only do in gray tones. Well, stay in gray tones until you have been, uh, I guess, cleared for color. Um, when you have contrast issues, you're going to have color issues. You choose the right values by one, referencing, always have a reference nearby. Two, subtle colors. Remember that the colors are a reflection of the value underneath them. Every color has a value equivalent, all right? And you all, if you want to know what value it is, you just got to look to this side of the slider. This is the value equivalent of this value. This is the value equivalent of this. This is the value equivalent of this color. This is the value equivalent of this color. So if you're choosing this color, it, if you're choosing this value in your painting, please know that you are restricted to these colors right here. All right? So it just, it's just really, really mathematical, really symmetrical. And if you want to use really, really nice values for skin, which, which pretty much are limited from here to here, really, really nice values. Even black skin, African skin, um, has values that are restricted to here and here. Their shadows and deep uh, can like caves in the face do still use black like any white face. Uh, but all of the best mid-tones, all of the best values sit right here in this beautiful saturation, this golden area, this golden spot right here where all the best colors come from. Then you have flame colors, you know, so if you're painting certain values on, on an actual flame candle or something you choose from here. Um, deeper fabrics you choose somewhere here, but skin tones are always here because they're close to the grays. They have a lot of subtlety. They aren't complete saturation. And this before was chosen from here. You chose actual pigmentation values that you find only in fabrics um, because they're dense enough and they're tr opaque enough to, to preserve all that color. Okay, so I hope that helped you guys. Um, 
She looks kind of pale right now for a tan complexion, especially compared to the oversaturated one. So what about having darker tones? Darker tones is a whole different lesson. Um, each drop in value brings in a cool value to it. You can only really study it by, by looking at a... Uh, but you just have less mid-tones, basically. The mid-tone is the shadow on a dark African skin tone. Um, she does not look pale. Pale is... Uh, see, that's the thing. You guys don't have a spectrum right now. Um, pale skin images pale skin looks very similar to this see that cool pink it's just a, it's an actual pink um this person's values right here i think this is adjusted i like these selfie photos because they're a little bit more realistic sometimes they over filter them but they tend to reveal um how pale or how like an unedited unphotoshopped face right here this girl considering her palm and her chest color probably had a tan but when these girls do their makeup, they try their best to tan themselves right there. And then I usually don't reference photos that, uh, see how pale her skin tone is, um, like in these areas. And she's using a warm value to, to tan herself, but still using a pretty warm, not that pink compared to uh, this at least. It's a pretty warm lipstick. And so that's what they're always trying to do, make themselves look tan, more tan. But when you do find a good reference, you do pick up on the fact that they're pretty pale and then you think olive skin so anyone from Mexico anyone from you, you end up having these exact values so this is not pale of course it's paler than dark African skin but this is this is tan right here let's see some more this is tan exactly the same thing just a little bit more orange and over edited and stuff okay exactly the same she's from India so let's see this one really similar okay so pale skin is it's a very very big jump between pale and medium or olive skin tone uh, just please remember that don't make the mistake of thinking this is a pale how do you desaturate skin without making everyone look white also this is a cool or warm tone it looks cool to me this is a warm tone um, if it looks cool to you, then you have to make do some studies for a cool tone, skin tone with a reference. Do one with a with a warm, and do one with a complete dark, um, and then you'll you'll be able to correct your reference system. Please don't make the mistakes of thinking what looks right to you is right. What looks right to you, if you're a beginner, is most likely wrong. Uh, that's because you're still developing your instinct. You're still developing your visual instinct for what looks right and what looks wrong. A lot of my critiquing style is just based off of that, my what looks like, what looks right and what looks wrong to me instinct. I don't have like a script of stuff and I don't run like a bunch of code in my brain and then find the, the you know, something that doesn't add up. It's just what looks right to me. Um, and that's because I've looked at enough studies, I've looked at enough of them to have developed a, a, like at least a topical awareness of what's cool and what's not. But if this looked cool to you, that's problematic. <clears throat> How does this coloring change when you're using colored pencils? It doesn't. It does not at all. Coloring, colored, the only thing with traditional is that you don't get layers. And if you go dark, you can't go back after that. So you just have to work light to dark and make sure that you are uh, limiting yourself from going too dark. And make sure that if you are choosing blushes, you're choosing a warm blush. And you're saturating between dark areas that are cooler and white air or saturated areas that are whiter. Please don't make the mistake of thinking that... Areas that are touched by light are purely saturated. This does not happen. This is not, this is not, no. What happens, it's on, on the outsides of the highlight. On the outside, the highlights are white. The sun is too white. Universal, though it is warm and promotes warm values to, to come out, uh, we don't have a blue sun. Uh, we wouldn't have warm, that many warm tones in our spectrum if we had a blue sun. It would be a very weird group of colors that comes out. Um, but uh, or is allowed to be seen uh, but we have a warm sun but still it's still very white could you saturate skin tone and desaturate eyes lips off opposite of what you said could you saturate skin tone and desaturate that's just pigmentation that just means that you I mean you just painted the face orange and it just so happens that the skin the, the lips are pale because the person's dehydrated and the eyes are just pale because of the pigmentation they have it's no no you can't it's not like that's not a rule of biology is what i'm saying here but if you wanted to do it <laughs> you go ahead but someone just got some orange and painted their face it's all that it's, that's going to be um equivalent to 
Should the background always be lighter than the subject? If there are hints of white like this and this on a dark object, be sure that the light around in the environment has also been affected. If it's a black room with black walls and it's a singular little not universal uh, spotlight shining on the face like we see in museum photographs of like uh, artifacts and stuff, then no, we would have a dark background. But still there is enough exposure. It's only because the room was not bright enough to reflect any light. If the room walls were painted a little differently, that spotlight would have affected respectively. How would you paint wet skin? Would the colors be more cool? Um, no, the colors would be more pale. Uh, cool is cool only happens if you're in a shadow or if the light source is cool. Nothing gets just cooled down just like that. Remember that the universal light source is what we start off no matter what we do. The god, the light is the god of the painting. It decides where shadows go, where radial shading climbs towards. So if you're deciding color, you're also basing it off the light source. If the light source is universal, which mostly is the most common one, we like seeing it in paintings, seems more real, they have a sun in their world just like we do, uh, then you are working with a warm value. When we have something that is wet, all that happens is the reflectivity, the specularity goes all the way up. It's like a mirror instead of mattified skin tone with slight explosions of oil. We have a completely wet skin tone, so we have more reflectivity. We have the reflection of a nearby table visible on the eyes just a little bit more if they're more wet. If we have um, a wet face or an oily face, it just reflects the light a little bit more wherever it's bouncing off in the room. So we have real indications of where the wetness is, like a, like a, 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 a soap bubble. <clears throat> How do you get undertones right? That's exactly what I've been saying this entire time. Undertones depend on, there's no, there's no undertone, it's just the blood and how much of the redness of that blood, how the redness of that blood is affected by the skin tone in front of it. So you've got, to reiterate, you've got lots of layers, but let's just try to minimize them and summarize them into one. You've got blood, all right, that looks a little bit more like actual skin, like blood in the skin underneath everything looks a lot like this. Right, lots of purple in that. And then you've got the skin tone. Let's decide that this person is from uh, Malaysia. I don't even know what people from Malaysia's skin tone looks like. I'm just gonna choose anything. <laughs> um, I'm gonna choose like an olive, okay? Something more universal. This is the base, base skin value of their skin if we were to separate it from everything. This is the undertone, so you've named it. Um, and this plus this affects the final outcome. These two combine. So we get a little bit of this and just a hint of that coming through. It's not see-through skin. And this is your base tone, all right? And you have decided this is a warm value because look at, look at its placement. It's not completely on the cools. This is like a cherry red. This is very, very warm compared to the cherry. Look at that. Practically purple compared to the base. This is the most fun skin tone to use. Um, it's very universal, it's, it's very easy to paint. A lot of character design artists just go straight for this one. And even this one has to be desaturated. Um, and after the light source hits it, after you choose blush for it, it gets affected uh, one more time. So it gets turned into something like this. And the blush tones, wherever they happen, and the highlights, wherever they happen, are more white. The shadows, wherever they happen, are more cool. And then you've got white color and warmness from the light source. It's more white, of course. And then you've got the saturation belt of any blush that goes back to this value and all the way back to this skin, skin color, I mean the blood color. Okay, so I hope that explains it a little bit. This is what undertones, there's no such thing as undertone. There's only one undertone you're dealing with and that's the blood, the color of the blood. Um, undertones is kind of a fancy way of saying uh, the way you, the, the universal value kind of sneaks into some of the values and affects them, either turns them cool or warm. If you're in an outside scene, all undertones, as by the definition of the word undertones, is just the way that the environment sneaks into the palette of the skin tone. So it cools things down, and I always call it a wash. Uh, just what, is it a cool day or a warm day? Is it a cool room or a warm room? Is it a cool skin tone or a warm skin tone? Um, uh, so wet skin is more whites and highlights. Whites because of a nearby light source, but if it's a wet 
android who just jumped out of a bunch of water in a post-apocalyptic street with a nearby blue neon light, then <laughs> the values on that android skin that is covered in water will be blue. It does not mean more white. It, it's whatever the nearby light source is. In one of your tutorials, you showed that saturation changes the value. However, earlier in the Q&A, you showed saturation directly horizontal from the value. I'm confused about which it is. Uh, saturation, uh, which one did I say the saturation changes the value? Uh, saturation shouldn't change value that much. If any, It's more light. If it changes it, it changes it slightly. But saturation, because there's more light, there's more color. Um, that doesn't mean that if we were to shine a bunch of light, we'd get more saturation. We'd just get overexposed values. We'd get, we'd get some peaks in some like subsurface scattering where the light goes under the skin and makes it glow and makes it glow into a, its most base color. Um, but saturation shouldn't affect... Saturation is lots of light. We've already decided that there's a lot of light on the face when the first brush stroke went down. So light on the object, we decided that this whole area is going to be light. So that we end up having a belt of saturation here and here because of the light nearby. Color feeds, uh, no, light feeds a color saturation. Without light, you don't have saturation. When you look outside at a red fire hydrant in the daytime, you see the real red that it was supposed to be. But when you, um, you know, look outside at night, it's more of a purple red. It's not so saturated. It's a very gray red. It's still red compared to everything else because everything else also dropped so low. How do I do light and black skin? Um, you do it in shines. Black skin is so dark that you get more shine than you do mid-tone. So you're actually, black skin is more reflective looks more reflective, is not any more reflective than normal, uh, look, the, no, like medium values. Um, but black skin in lots of light looks more reflective. So you get more highlights than you do midtones in black skin. Subsurface scattering happens when a light is in such a position where it's shining through the potentially translucent object. If it's, if it's subsurface scattering doesn't have happen on a brick or a concrete object, um, it happens on stuff that is slightly see-through. Saturation shouldn't change the value too much. Exactly. Um, if it does, it's only because of the way that you did it, or um, like the way that you uh, desaturated, like on Photoshop. If you mess around with a filter, maybe at that point it'll mess it up. Uh, but yeah. Isterback, must we have cool shadows and uh, when must we have saturated shadows on the skin? Shadows will always be cool? Yes. How can you saturate something that is by nature lacking light source? It can be saturated, maybe not saturated, but it might have a funny new color because of the nearby objects that are reflecting or a funny color happened because of subsurface scattering that might have happened, but it is impossible that a shadow a shadow saturation contests and is more than the, 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 the saturation in areas that are lit. Write that back to me. It is impossible that a shadow saturation contests lit area saturation. All right? It's impossible. It's physically impossible. However, there are conditions. Some people break this rule and bring in a whole new color in their shadows for stylization purposes. Sometimes you have a nearby bounce light that saturates the shadow in its own way. Sometimes you have a funny weird scarf that's nearby that throws off its color and saturates in a funny way in a picture. Uh, but mostly, it is impossible. Just follow that rule. Don't worry about the conditions. Don't worry about the exceptions. You are not concerning that those, those don't concern you right now. What concerns you is that you paint in grayscale and move into color with subtlety. <clears throat> um, will the hues change when it's a bony area comp compared to fleshy areas? It shouldn't. Um, it's like saying, what do I paint? Do I use a different color for this robot's arm uh, versus its leg. One, one is a little bit more skeletal or bony or wiry than the other. No, you still start with the same color. You just have more edges. Edges mean you have less uh, gradients and gradients mean you have more sharp, sudden in, in, uh, introduction of the color. Uh, but it should just pretty much be the same color. Again, those are exceptions. Those are very specific issues. You should not be concerning yourself with those. Um, 
It is impossible that sat shadow saturation beats light saturation. Excellent. Very well, very eloquently put compared to how I said it. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I'm starting to feel a little tired and dizzy. I should probably lay down. Um, I'm going to talk about these a little bit um, as much as I can, but only a little. Uh, okay. So this one, you do have nice uh, universal warm values. You, you stayed very, very close to the values you chose, but you have a lot of green. And when you have green and orange like that, or green and yellow bases beside each other, you get you get real issues. Uh, so what happened is green washes aren't that pretty because green tends to, it, it, green has this permanent attitude about it in, in the world and the way it's used in media. Green is spooky. It's spook, okay? Green equals spook. Um, so just think about its use in every single media you can name. Uh, from the Lord of the Rings to uh, Scooby-Doo. They use green for spooky, spooky ghosts. So when you do a wash that's green, you're really giving off a very specific vibe. If you're trying to paint an outdoor shiny, uh, flowery, romantic garden with the light shining midday and summertime, you use yellow and you use saturations and reds more than you use green. Of course there's green, there's greenery everywhere, but it's a very yellow green. And what you've given me here is a very pale green. So these greens have affected your values. This is a very, very pale, this is a very green skin tone. And you don't see it, and I have to show it to you before you see it. Because um, you won't pick it up on your own. No. Uh, let me see what I can do. All right. Let me show you how green she is. I'm going to shift her over into her reds and then desaturate. Wait, no, 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 no. What am I doing? This is wrong. See, I'm so rusty. I'm going to shift her over into the cools of her skin tone. Moving away from green. She's still very warm, but I'm pushing her away from green. She's still warm and then saturate just a touch. See how green she was before? This, this, there's no wash in a clear day. There's no fog. It's just a warmness. And so that warmness brings out whatever values she had. She's also got a lot of green on her forehead that I have to manually fix. And her values are very, very high. Look at the equivalent of this skin tone. This is pale. She's considered pale which is why it's more easy to shift her into the cool values. So she looks like the pale rose buddy, English rose kind of. And then this, at this point, we desaturate for subtlety. This looks like better skin tone. All you're missing after that is the white of the light source. So this less yellow, more white. We go straight into the whites, and we choose a pinky white kind of to keep the cools going. But you just can't do that with with these uh, with these skin tones. You can't mess around with greens like that. Be very, very careful and be aware of what your values are, what they mean, what they're speaking on a media, you know, in the media language. So I'm just bringing in some yellows. I'm starting to hate this brush. Right, you don't have no any, you don't have any shadows um, on the rotation, see that? You have no shadows here. It's all one flat value. You need to rotate the head away from the light source. So yeah, you had no rotation going on. So you had that issue. Good job on the purples, but you, you are missing a big factor in the skin tone palette. Your eyebrows are a little overdrawn, but yeah, you were missing lots and lots of whites kind of just have to do this really quickly. Sorry about the rough work. Okay, so I'm going to merge that down. So now she looks like she's got a skin of her own. She's not a spooky, spooky ghost. And you've separated her palette from the palette of the nearby object, so she doesn't look like a ghost sitting in the garden with the garden seen visible through her. She looks like she has her own pigmentation. She's her own biological organism. All right, and her values were all the way up. She had really, really high values. 
her highlighters, her mid-tones were all up here. M medium sits up here with the highest value here. Pale sits here with the highest value all the way near white. I don't think I have time for the rest. Um, I think I'm going to just, uh, wow, 45 minutes. I used to last like a, an hour and 10 minutes and I get tired. <laughs> now I'm really tired. Um, so let me just wait for Photoshop to uh, figure out what it's doing. Here, way too pale. No understanding of the light source environment in the background. You went into hair and eyebrows. You need to just stop everything you're doing and try a hair-free grayscale painting of a face. So you, at least so you can try perfecting the nose just as a nose. Perfecting the lips, perfecting the shadows of the head and where they rotate to. What we do and how hard we work on it all depends on how important art is to us. Look at all this exposure and the light source environment. The value is just all the way down. Why? Why is the val why is the background exempt from any light source? Why is that? And then the value is way too yellow starting out, way too saturated starting out. You need more subtlety. You need to shift it towards more believable uh, redness. Right. There's no such thing as yellow skin, and I know there's, you know, out there, South Park is painting Asians yellow, but that's just all caricature. It's not, it's just a, such a slight shift when you're talking about yellower skin. It's it's such an, an unbelievably subtle shift, and we, they still, Asians are still very, very pale, and they still have almost pure red, pure cherry reds, and, and um, not cherry reds, like a really uh, cool red lips, and cool red cheeks. They still blush very, very pale. They're very, very pale. They're not yellow at all. Okay, so don't let, I know there's like that media language, but don't fall into that. This one, same issue as the flower girl. Um, you didn't have enough of a differentiation between the wash and the back. Also, he looks a little divine. He looks like a prophet that, or like a god that is, you know, doing his gaudy thing, but is also really cocky. He looks a bit too divine. And yeah, he's a king, but that's not the story. You're not trying to show the great conquest of one specific king. You're trying to show that he's a dick. So that means that you need to separate the background value. So let's just try it with the background value from the you know, whatever the skin tone is. So I would do something like this just to completely separate, not choose a background value. Like if I was a photographer, I would not choose a background value that looks like that is very similar to the skin tone. Fuck, why did I do that? Uh, the skin tone of the uh, of the character. Like I would not do that. So I've chosen a different background value. That's fixed all the mistakes all at once. And then we've got the inversion, where we have almost no subtlety in skin tone choice. So I'm bringing that subtlety back down. I would also change the hair color to be a little bit more different. It looks like Tyrion Lannister. And uh, you have this just glow on everything. You have this just, it's just glowing. Everything is just glowing. He looks way too divine. You're using a very, you know, this top-down light source. You're using it way too much. So I'm just going to desaturate there. And then desaturate around his beard. Just to show some, you know, different values. Desaturate around his eyes. Areas that are see-through, like the under eye, all have a very, very um, greenness, purpleness to them, depending on the skin tone. Uh, so that's, that's all I can do right now to fix it. The whites, all the whites that you're supposed to be having are way, way too saturated. So I'm just going to desaturate these. They should be more white than orange. So his hairline, anywhere where we have, I'm going to get the color layer. I get a nice highlighter. Anywhere where we have, let's take a look. Look at the hair. Hair is very mirror-like, write that back to me. And that means that it's more susceptible of reflecting back the color of the light source. That also means that areas around the highlight are, get to be that, um, you know, golden blonde color. But just take a look here. Areas that are directly exposed to the light are more white because they get to reflect the whiteness. 
I'm going to use dodge tool and then desaturate it. Just take a look. All right, so you didn't have enough value. You have a lot of subsurface scattering potential down here under this. So I'm going to just saturate that. Really nice little trick there. Some subsurface scattering over here. All right, and then I'm going to desaturate whatever I just did just now with the dodge tool. And then I am going to saturate, just take a look, around that highlight. So that's how hair works. We saturate around the belt of highlight, not on the belt of highlight. Over here, here let me just correct this value a little bit. Over here, way too yellow, not enough white. You guys miss that a lot in your in your paintings. And then we've got subsurface scattering on his on his uh, nose. So we've got some just around here. His nose is a little too orange. I would choose a more red color. He looks like a pale French king. So I would choose if I could, like a like a select only the face that's possible I would cool down his entire skin tone let's take a look so I would shift it over into the cools make his head a little cooler it's too yellow too orange it looks sickly just like that and so the problem is that it's not moving universal it's not moving collectively because you've got patches of cool and patches of warm in here you watched a tutorial somewhere on YouTube that said use this color and this color. There are tutorials out there that are very not universal. They're very specific to the reference that one teacher was using in that one instance in that one video. They're not accurate. And if you follow that, if you take that photorealism lesson and apply it everywhere, you're going to have issues with all your work because you're, you're photographing one thing in your visual library. and basing everything off of it. You need to work on a more universal form. I'm just throwing a pink over everything to help out with the cool. I don't want his skin color to be the exact same as his hair color because that's icky. You don't want to do that. That's very, very uh, lazy palette work. So now he looks a little less divine. I mean, I would bring in a little bit more dark here. Um, throw that saturation there for the subsurface scattering. Um, I'm not sure. The nose needs to be a little bit more bright. Crap. Nose, yeah, needs to be a little bit more bright. I'm just going to desaturate that. Now, see how it's too yellow? Because Dodge Tool saturates and highlights. I want it to just highlight. So I have to go back and rush a sponge tool on it to desaturate for me. But yeah, if I was a photographer, I would not make the mistake of using a background color that's the same color as the skin tone, a, a hair color that's the same color as the skin tone, uh, confusing the narrative of a conceited king who's full of himself with the uh, highlight of a divine upper, you know, you know, light coming from the skies. He doesn't. It's hard for me to access him as a, as a viewer. It's hard for me to figure out what he's all about. So something simple like this, even a gray background, if you want to go for a green background, have it a different kind of green. You have all kinds of green to choose from. You have a cool green or a warm green. You chose warm green, that don't do that. You have a you have a very warm yellow happening. And these are just too analogous to be used beside each other. Um, so you can use this kind of green. Uh, just don't use that green that you did use. All right, so it's a little easier to deal with. See, his skin tone is a little more human, a little more cool. I would just go, you know, it's a caricature, so I'm allowed to. I'm just going to fully gray out his, any beard area that he has. I'm just going to have fun with that. Maybe he's plucked his eyebrows a little too much and he's got some grayness happening around his eyebrows. Maybe he's got some grays he's hiding with his uh, wig, just like that. Maybe the areas here around his chest are also getting to be a little bit more gray because all, all that hair gets in the way and doesn't let the blush come through. The hair occupies the skin area. The blood gets pushed out so you don't have blush as much. And that hair looks green when it's under skin. Have you ever had that ingrown hair that looks green? Disgusting. 
Alright. So before, more variety in the palette. Separation between hair color and skin color and background color and skin color. Alright. So that's it for today. I'm sorry I won't be able to look at any more questions. I'm really happy I'm back. Um, I, I, I was really, really, it was really sad for me to be away from you guys for so long. But I think you guys did amazing. Some announcements. The... I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but the Dragon Challenge is due on Thursday. If you haven't finished it by now, honestly, you shouldn't have even started. Because, um, am I breaking out? Do you guys, like, hear me? Am I, am I breaking out a lot? <clears throat> oh, well, am I breaking out? Because, what's his name is telling me that I'm breaking out? Anyway, um, so yeah, if you haven't finished it, you need to finish it. Um and upload it on Thursday. It's due on Thursday. Uh, so if you did join the challenge for this season, this challenge season, it is the Conversation with a Dragon challenge. Um, if you have completed it, I'll be looking them at them all on Thursday. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if I feel good on Thursday, just like today, I stayed away from my workout, so I have all this energy for you guys for class. I'm going to do the workout after my class, which is, I think, the best way um, to figure this whole fatigue thing out. Um, I'm really happy I'm back. I smell everything and I taste everything. After the surgery by like two weeks, um, I, I, even by a week when I started to get my sense of smell back, I smelled like things that I've never smelled before in like my perfume. My perfume had all these layers to it and tones and I, and I never sensed those before. Um, as <laughs> to breaking out <laughs> um, and uh, taste is on a whole new level I, I was talking about this in the after hours I'm just really really it's, it was really tough and really painful and I was like rushed to the ER after because I had a stupid fever after it, afterwards I was iced from head to toe and I could not cool down it was really weird um, but all of that is worth it just to be able to breathe so if you're someone who needs a septoplasty or you have a deviated septum you're really missing out workouts I just have like I'm high on oxygen all the time because I've never breathed so well before um, so I really if you guys need a septoplasty or you have breathing problems this surgery is just the best thing to really help you it, it changed it's changed my life and I still haven't healed yet I'm still like my, I know this still hasn't healed yet so I can't imagine how well I'm gonna breathe soon um, I don't know if my voice changed but I, I did listen to my videos before and my videos now and my you know how I sound now I do sound a little less nasally uh, my ends don't sound so uh, stuffy right now they sound a bit stuffy because of my cast but um, hopefully I don't have to wear that anymore but thank you all for your patience. Thank you for waiting two weeks. Uh, you guys are the best. I will see you guys on Thursday. Good luck with your challenges. Please make sure you're uploading to the right area. If you want to join the community and you haven't joined before, uh, whoops, I don't have the history for that. This is right.com. It's still. <laughs> um, just go here and click on the Google Plus icon. It'll take you to the community. Join it. Read the rules. Please follow the rules. Please do not ask me for private consultations on Facebook. I don't do those. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great day, guys. See you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye.